Dutch football has been defined by artistry, skill, invention and creativity and by some of the game's finest players. Dutch footballers are blessed with a unique national sensibility. But such players may never have graced the game without the progressive ideology of one man. In the mid-60s, Dutch football was behind the times, amateur and adrift from the rest of Europe. But the emergence of one manager changed the style and structure of the game itself. One of the very first things I tried to push through in Ajax was the understanding that if the Netherlands would want to be able to hold their own on an international level, then we had to get rid of this semi-professionalism and had to go fully professional. He controlled the players, he controlled the youth, he controlled uh, uh, probably the board of directors too. Michels had everything, and he used his education to pass on his knowledge. He was, of course, a very good teacher. Michels was a great coach, the best. The Netherlands is defined as much by water as by land. Its architecture is testament to this. In the football world, perhaps more than any other manager, Rinus Mikkels is a product of his nation. In a country where space is at a premium, Mikkels recognized the same principle applied on the football pitch. The key was how to optimize what little space was available, and by doing so, he created a new way of playing. It became known as total football. From the beginning, I've tried to manage the build-up of an attack with a priority for more deep play. Attackers and midfielders would defend, and defenders would build up and attack. The style of play of the Dutch national team at that time was at world-class level, and our game astounded friend and foe alike. And you could, of course, call this total football. Marinus Jacobus Michels was born in Amsterdam in 1928, a stone's throw from the Olympic Stadium, the original home of Ajax. From the very outset, football was in his blood. We would get up first thing in the morning to be at Ajax for 12 midday, to buy kids' tickets for 10 cents. That, for me, is the Ajax feeling. My father, brought My father that, uh, passed that on, and like him, I was a football maniac from the moment I could walk. Like other boys his age, Mikael dreamt of running out at the famous Ajax stadium. Unlike most, he fulfilled his dream, joining Ajax's youth side age 12. In 1946, after the war, he stepped up to the first team. An industrious forward, Mikels went on to score 122 goals in 264 games, winning two league titles. Technically, Mikels was a very good player. Scored lots of goals, especially with his head. He was a strong player for the Dutch team. In the beginning, his very first match, he scored five goals. Mikels learnt a great deal under two Ajax managers from England, Vic Buckingham and Jack Reynolds. Their progressive ideas on how the game should be played interested Mikels, who would not be deterred by the amateur status of Dutch football. Alongside his work as a PE teacher, Mikels spent five years managing amateur sides Jos and AFC. By 1965, he was ready to accept the chance of a lifetime, becoming manager of Ajax, where changes would have to be made. 
He used this knowledge of teaching as well as his knowledge of the world of football. He didn't just know what was good, but also what he thought needed to be changed. I was known as a joker, and people always assumed I would stay the same person I was. I quickly realized that if I were to bring in a regime based on discipline, that there would be sufficient respect. He noticed that the several players were just lazing about and, and were not doing anything. So he just started with discipline. And now, as a coach, he, already, he immediately made a distance between himself and the team. I needed to change my approach and needed to make it clear to everyone that even though they were semi-professionals, money and spectator numbers were at stake. And for that, they needed to do certain things and stop others. At his first meeting with the team, he sat down and said, we want to be professional. Ajax has to be professional. And anyone who doesn't agree with this, well, they can quit. Football is war. From now on, you are all numbers. Training will be extremely hard. And anyone who doesn't want to do this can say so now and can go. At away matches, he had the same mentality. Our players would like sandwiches with something on. And other coaches would say, that's ridiculous, just adapt to how we do things here. But Mikos would refuse and say, no, you guys have to adapt to how we do things at Ajax. Mikels began signing his better players to professional contracts. Pete Kaiser, the star left winger, was the first. Next was a scrawny 17-year-old who would become the heartbeat of Mikel's team, Johan Cruyff. We've worked together, I think, about 11 years, 12 years. Mikos was a big help because he arranged the organization outside the field and I could arrange it inside the field. The genius, the man with a vision that only very few players have been blessed with. And despite the fact they are under pressure by the opponent, need to come up with a rapid action, but who can keep a total overview, which means they can play very efficiently as part of a team. And that, I find, was the extra value of Cruyff as the star. Taking over when Ajax were fifth from bottom, Mikel's first season was one of consolidation, but he was aiming much higher. It, of course, became clear to me that Ajax should have as its first goal to become champions in the Netherlands as soon as possible. And in order to do this, we needed more intense training sessions. We went to training camp, and it was as if I had joined the army. Get up at 7 o'clock in the morning, walk. 8.30 to 9 o'clock, breakfast. 10.30, cardiovascular without the ball. At 2.30, tactical and technical exercise. At five o'clock, we played matches. You were so tired, training five times a day. You wanted to go to bed straight away. In 1966, Ajax won the Eredivisie for the first time in six years. For only the third time in their history, Ajax would now take part in the European Cup. In the second round, they faced English champions Liverpool. A Dutch team win against an English team was something outrageous that didn't exist. That was a great game for Ajax and for the whole of Holland. We beat one of the best teams in Europe. We won 5 1. The game we played was totally different than they were used to. A 2 2 draw in England secured a place in the quarter finals. But when Ajax were surprisingly knocked out by the Czech side Dukla Prague, 
Mikel's ruthless streak came to the fore. Well, the famous example is of Sutefit uh, Sutekau, who scored an own goal in the quarter-final of the European Cup in Park. And at the end of the season, he was thrown out at Ajax and told he could go. Mikel's was now in total control, and on the pitch, his priorities were simple. The first thing I had on my list was becoming champions. And secondly, to, as much as possible, develop a positive playing style. With a positive playing style, meaning that you put the emphasis as little as possible on defending, but try as much as possible to make play. This attacking mindset led to a League and Cup double in 1967. Michels was attempting to create art through football. Ajax played the game differently from other teams and a new expression entered the footballing lexicon. Ajax played a football of positions, a football of movement, where positions continuously changed and attackers and midfielders would defend, and vice versa. Defenders would build up and attack, and all of this in a constant circulation. And you could, of course, call this total football. Michels went to watch basketball and he picked up the pressure from, uh, from basketball. The forward would pressure the keeper and the defender and then the midfielders would come along. So you get a sort of surge forward and, and the, the opponents would like back off and get back to their own goal. We would mark the opposition man for man. And if their goalkeeper had the ball, he wouldn't be able to throw it to anyone, because one of us would always be there. Ajax, was, the pressure was so much that they just couldn't get out. And the keeper would uh, play long balls, and then they would lose possession immediately. We played then like Barcelona play now. It's fun when you see Messi, Xavi, and Iniesta. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. <laughs> Ajax were enjoying themselves, and in 1969 they finally reached the European Cup final. Their opponents? Italian giants Milan. Shaki, you are a great footballer. If anyone can drop the ball on that line, it is you, together with Pete. Cup football, and to a lesser extent, football in normal competition, demands full attention. You cannot relax for a second because any moment of relaxation can be fatal. The manager's words were prophetic. Ajax were defeated 4-1. But the team, and Michels, would learn. The players themselves thought that the tact Michels' tactics was too attacking, and too, too offensive. And that, that was, maybe he learned from that that you need more, but you also have to play in defence. The experience was not there. Uh, we made some chances, mistakes, but you have to go through these mistakes, otherwise you could never, uh, you can never understand what it is. You had to learn from it. We got absolutely thrashed and got nothing. Although we played quite well, we didn't get the result. So I needed to take another step and put it into practice. In the European Cup final at Wembley two years later, Ajax were determined not to make the same mistakes against Greek champions Panathinaikos. Despite nerves, Ajax won 2-0 with goals from Dick van Dijk and Adi Hahn. It was their first European trophy. It was a coronation of the many years of hard work this team put in, under my direction. To not just deliver results, but to do so with a playing style, which we can certainly regard as a style that carries a lot of risk. Ajax would win the European Cup in the following two seasons as well, but without Mikkels. After winning nine trophies in just six years, he decided to test himself abroad in Barcelona.
Mikels was given one target, the league title, which Barcelona had not won since 1960. And Mikels immediately saw why. The Spanish player, as opposed to a Dutch player, is very sensitive to criticism. They are very sensitive to criticism from the stands, but also from the media. And when things are not going well during a match, they have a tendency to shrink back into themselves. They try to look as good as possible as an individual, but no longer operate as a team player. Under Mikel's direction, Barcelona finished third, then second. The manager knew what was required. Returning to his old club, he signed Johan Neyskins and his protégé, Johan Cruyff. They, in turn, brought the required mentality. Cruyff especially tried to maintain the unity in the team on the pitch and prevent this falling back. He had more self-confidence and did not give a damn about the criticism from the stands and around him. This only took form then, although I brought it in myself. It requires players on the pitch and in training who radiate this and who act like this and who deliver this. If you've got a game where you want the ball, what are you going to do with the ball? You try to attack. I mean, you try to take the club to score a goal, which means you always try to get the positive side. Barcelona at that time had some good players, but they, they, they didn't think like that. And, and the moment they start thinking like that, it was a very good team. Neskins and Cruyff proved to be the catalyst for Barcelona. The season of 1973-74 saw the club win their first La Liga title for 14 years. As in Amsterdam, Michels was now a hero. But an even bigger prize loomed on the horizon. The 1974 World Cup was about to start in West Germany, and the Netherlands needed a coach. Sometimes we went, sometimes I didn't, and, and it was just a little mess. Then everybody realized, hey, we've got a big name to defend now. Five years in dominating Europe, we can't be, look like fools, it's impossible. Mikels joined the Dutch setup just a month before the finals began. Having played under him at Ajax, many of his squad were familiar with his methods but nothing was taken for granted. Well, we trained incredibly hard with Mikkels. For a month, we really pulled out all the stops to get to top form. And the moment we went off to Germany, we were really fit and in exceptional form. In 1974, the Dutch national team came into a tournament out of nothing, and they made a big name for themselves. And they did so in dazzling fashion, the highlight being a 4-0 thrashing of Argentina. But in order to reach the final, the Dutch would have to overcome the reigning world champions, Brazil. The manager knew which side should be more concerned. The style of play of the Dutch national team at that time was at world-class level, and our game astounded friend and foe alike. We had to respect Holland too. In my opinion, they were my favourites to win the title because of the modern football they played in that World Cup. It was a whole different way of seeing the game. Holland ran out 2-0 winners, with Neskins and Cruyff scoring the goals. They had qualified for their first ever World Cup final. And then you saw that the, the big and the great team we had because we, we didn't only outplay the, the Brazilians, but we outplayed them with the best football. There would be no happy ending. In the final against arch rivals West Germany, Johan Neskin's penalty gave the Dutch a second minute lead without Germany touching the ball. But Paul Breitner equalized from the spot before Gerd Muller scored the winner. He scored many like this. It was not an aberration. And again, he scored in the decisive moment. I think we played a little too confident. And at, at, at the same time, if you do that, you don't do the things perfectly. That's why we didn't win the game. That's why we lost. We really had the time of our lives there. It was just a shame that we didn't win the final. We kind of forgot we had to win. to win. 
14 years later, after spells in America and Germany, Mikel's return to international management. The European Championships of 1988 brought together the most talented group of Dutch players since the early 70s. I had a very balanced group of players, by which I mean that for our playing style, we had good defensive build-up, and in the attack, we had a well-balanced hole, and especially for the way we played, this was very important. A 1-0 defeat to Russia meant the Dutch had to win against England. Mikels made a crucial change, bringing in striker Marco van Basten. What started as a very difficult uh, tournament uh, changed as, as a, a dream uh, for, for someone like me. A 1-0 win over Ireland would mean a semi-final with arch-rivals West Germany. Germany versus Holland is, of course, always a very special occasion. A bit like England versus Scotland. A match that cannot compare to anything else. So there was a huge atmosphere around this match. A Lothar Matthäus penalty gave the hosts the lead. Ronald Koeman equalised from the spot. Before Van Basten struck, just two minutes from time to vanquish the old enemy and put Holland in the final. Mikkels had gained some sort of revenge for that World Cup final defeat 14 years earlier. Everybody was happy uh, that we won against Germany. I was happy because we went to the final and that was something that was for me important. Van Basten's late winner against West Germany meant the Dutch met Russia once again, only this time it was in the final. Ruud Hullet opened the scoring. Before Van Basten sealed the victory with one of the greatest goals ever seen. Rinus Mikkels had made history, winning a trophy for the Dutch. And he did it playing his way, the way he thought football should be played. We had a... A really good team spirit at the time and uh, we were younger and uh, we didn't know what it was uh, to win uh, important things and uh, so the talent and the age the youngsters and that in combination with Rinus Michels I think uh, worked out great. The 1988 European Championships were the culmination of a career spent in football and the last trophy won by Michels before his retirement. 13 trophies in a career spanning 27 years may not be as impressive as some records, but for many, Rinus Mikkels will always be remembered as the greatest for achieving success with a hugely influential style that changed the game. In 1999, he was voted coach of the century by FIFA. Rinus Mikkels' philosophy was that football played well was not just a sport, but an art form. I think all players who played under Michels have all become stars with strong personalities. He made us better football players and better human beings. It's very important that Michels was there because, he, yes, he was an authentic professional, not only in a job, but in an organisation. He was calm and he knew that uh, we were willing and able to, uh, to do the job. So I think that was a very important moment. We were able to, uh, to win the European uh, Championship also because he made it a really good team together. Rinus Mikkels died in 2005, age 77. He is remembered as one of the greatest managers of all time and the godfather of total football. It was his philosophy which inspired the likes of Johan Cruyff at Barcelona and Arsene Wenger at Arsenal. To believe that whilst winning always takes precedence, playing football beautifully should always be the aim. I have always been of the realistic, pragmatic opinion that eventually it is about the results, winning matches and winning the league. 
And if you can do that with positive football, then it does make it harder. But on the other hand, it is mentally more liberating, more fun.